In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct a 2D popsicle stick bridge in AutoCAD. To begin, let's grab our line tool and find somewhere to work in the space that we're provided. You want to have enough room to have the um, construction appear below the line so you wouldn't be too close to the bottom here. I'm going to put my first point somewhere high up in this region here so that I have room below to construct the remainder of the bridge. So I'll just zoom in a little bit more, keep it safe. All right. And if you look at the specification sheet that has been uploaded to D2L, you will see that you cannot exceed the length of 550 millimeters. And that has to include the um, pieces that extend on each end. I'm going to have the overhang uh, be 20 millimeters on each end. So I will deduct 40 from 550 to give me 510. So let's make this 510. And the height is not to exceed 110 millimeters. So I'm going to, to make it safe. So there's some flexibility there. I think I'll put a uh, hundred. And when I say 110, I mean below, I'm not creating anything on the top. So for me, that's the only number that matters. So I'll do a hundred just to play it safe. And then I'll come back here. This is 510 and then up. This is 100 and then space bar to trim. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a rectangle as an outline, as a shape that contains all the details that I'm going to be building. So because I'm going to design the more standard looking popsicle stick bridge that um, if you go to Mohawk College's website seems to be the uh, popular design, I will create um, a triangular shape with two lines. So I'm going to click on the bottom here and find my midpoint. Now, as you can see, it's not going to click there, right? That's because I have ortho mode on. So let's turn that off. Click here, come back down here to finish it. Okay, so that gives me my V shape. Um, next, I want to have a join piece that would come across about here. And I don't want it at the midpoint. I want it in between the midpoint and the top. So what I'm going to do is create another line that only goes from the top to the mid, mid, mid area. Okay. And now I'll grab my line tool and find the midpoint of that and bring it down. Now to ensure that this area here lines up on this side, I'm going to add a line that extends from here to here. Now, when I create my line down here and I have the midpoint and I draw over here, it connects perfectly. Okay, um, the other thing that I would like to do is to add some support pieces here and here. Um, once again, I don't necessarily want it in the middle region. I think I want it a little bit offset. So let's see, what have we got here? If I create this, this is the midpoint from the original line. And I come down here, that seems like a suitable area. And I'm just pulling this line down. Um, it, it, you can trim off any, like if you wanted to remove this, for instance, you can leave it here and so on. I'm going to click here and bring this down here. Okay, so those are two uh, pieces for extra strength. And then I want to have my overhang region added. So that's 20 millimeters on each side. And then hit spacebar to repeat the last command, type in 20. Now, if you find your lines are looking a little crooked, don't forget to put ortho mode back on. Okay, so I have the basic skeletal frame constructed. Now I want to remove anything that I'm not going to use. So for me, uh, that involves these top regions here. I'm just going to grab the trim tool. And remember that on a Mac, all these uh, tools are located in different spots. If you're having troubles finding it, just type in the word 
and it will come up for you. And that's the beauty of AutoCAD. You can always type in the command. I think I'm also going to get rid of this lower region here. And I'll leave it at that. So you're starting to see a familiar uh, look at this point. Now, the one thing we have issues with are the um, line widths, right? So we need to make them thicker so they look like popsicle sticks that have been layered. There's probably a couple of ways to make your lines appear thicker, but I'm going to use the command offset. And on a Mac, it's located here. On a PC, the icon is similar, but of course it's on the top region. So I'll click on that. And before you click on anything, you have to specify the distance. I think I'm going to have uh, five units, but you could have more than that, 10 or something. I found 10 a little bit too thick. So I'll type in five. And then I'll click on an area and then click on the new area and it's done. It's that simple. Uh, if you don't want the thickness to extend this way because that's actually cutting into your overhang, uh, you can bring it to the, to the other side. So let's undo that. Once again, we select offset, type in five, click on the region and then click to the right, done. I'm going to select offset again, five, done. Don't worry about those uh, gaps. I'll show you how to close those in a while. Let's first thicken all of our lines, five again. And you can go up or down depending on where you want the thickness. I think I'm going to bring this up. And um, here I think I'll extend this up as well. And I'll bring this one up instead of down so that it meets this region here. So they connect and then I'll do the same over here. Almost done. Okay, so it's looking a little rough at the moment because we have to fill in these gaps. The best way to close these gaps up is to simply use the line tool. There's a couple of ways of doing it, maybe even more than a couple of ways, but uh, this is probably the easiest to wrap your head around. So you type L or you select it from your menu. Click. Click at spacebar, spacebar again to repeat the last command. Over here, if you want to see where the midpoint is, just hover over it and it will show itself to you. Um, we scroll down here, that's closed, that's closed. If you're having difficulties, if it's not, if it's snapping incorrectly, just extend to the next line and it will straighten up. So here you wanna show where the... Now if it's, I'm not feeling confident that that's the middle, so I'm going to actually draw a line up the center just to be extra cautious. There we go. And then let's extend this. And 
And let's see, what have we got? Oh, this one up here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is trim any overlapping pieces, uh, remove them, even if that looks like where a join should be and you want to see it from a visual standpoint, AutoCAD doesn't quite work in that manner. So you need to clean all of those up. So you grab your trim tool and you go in here and make sure that's removed. So it's one large shape. Okay, I think that cleaned that up. Now, if you recall, we put on a lot of lines to create midpoints. So we have lines overlapping lines. So what we want to do is um, type in a command called overkill. And what that does is it removes any lines that are overlapping. So we're gonna select all of our objects, hit enter. So hit okay and those issues are, without really seeing any difference, they've been addressed. And that allows us to get ready for extruding um, our lines out. Which come okay, the next step before we uh, progress to doing the 3D version of this would be to create the cross pieces that join the two sides together. Um, there's probably multiple ways of doing this. I'm just choosing this method as it is the easiest way to approach it in my mind. So I wanted to start um, having cross pieces from this region spanning across and coming down here and ideally evenly spaced. To do that, I think the best method would be to find your point here, run up, click, and come down here and click. Okay. So my line, if I were to go under dimensions, and let's go into dim sty. I'm on a Mac, so it looks a little different than what you will see. And it's probably a good idea to have the text size at around six and hit OK, close. So it's 393.9, it's a very awkward number. Take 394, and then I'll say I want a one, uh, two, three, four, five, six sections. So, so 394 divided by six. So let's pull up a calculator here. Okay, so 394 divided by 6. So, I mean, once again, it's slightly awkward, but every 65 millimeters or so, we could put in a um, cross section. Now, one way to avoid this awkward number is maybe to squeeze them closer together near the top, but let's go from here and see what happens. Um, the other thing that I'm, uh, because I'm doing this in a rush, I haven't been telling you guys to do it, but you always work with layers. So right now I've been putting everything on the one layer. 
uh, that is not advisable. <laughs> and of course you would name your layer. This would be um, objects, for instance. This would have been dimensions. So don't do what I am doing uh, when you're building your own. I'm just doing this as quickly as possible. The distance, the span I want across um, is somewhat dictated by the specifications as outlined in the um, spec sheet that's been posted on D2L. The maximum width of the structure shall not exceed 110 millimeters. And we also have to account for the fact that the popsicle sticks add on a certain width as well. And we don't know what that width is at this time. So I, to be safe, I'm going to assume that each side of the popsicle sticks um, stacked together would amount to about 10 millimeters on each side. Um, likely closer to five, but you know, we'll, we'll go with 10. So deduct 20 off of 110 and you have 90 millimeters. So we can start our first point here and make that 90 and then back to five units and come down 90 and close it off. Spacebar to trim. Okay, in order to duplicate our first um, cross section piece, we probably could do it in a couple of ways. I, I like the copy command, so I'm gonna select this and you can type copy or right click and select copy selection. And then you grab one of the corners and you move it. The first one's easy because you just simply put in uh, 65 or 66, depending what number you want to go with. Um, now the second one would be 65 plus 65. So you're going to want to have a calculator ready or have your uh, measurements recorded already in a sheet of paper so that you're not going back and forth. Um, now what you could do if you don't want to deal with the math is you would select the second one, copy it, and move from there so that it's always 65 from the latest point. But I'll just type in 130 and then 195 and 260, 325. And 390. So um, it's fairly close. I think there will be some, you know, this one will be slightly off. You could probably just tap it into place or um, make some adjustments over in the center. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think it would be a negligible issue. I don't think it would compromise your structure. So what we can do is delete this, and now we have our cross sections.